Today is a rainy day here at St. John's because I'm recording this a week or two before the lesson. But inside here it's happy and we're thinking about God and we're so glad that you and mom and dad are joining with us. Before we get started, let's bless ourselves. Remember when we bless ourselves, we're making the shape of the cross from our forehead to our heart is the long piece and from our left shoulder to our right is the cross piece. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. And if you remember, I told you, Amen means I believe. Let's start off with the prayer that Jesus taught people when they said, how do we talk to God? And listen to the first word, our. God is the father of every single one of us. We are all children of God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And now the prayer to Mary, our mother. We're going to start with the words the angel said to her. Hail Mary, full of grace. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And we bless ourselves again in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I hope you're all practicing your prayers. It's important to know them by heart. Okay? Today is our lesson six. Last week, we had lesson five which was the safe environment lesson about taking care of your bodies, all right? And lesson six is for November 15th. We're going to start in our book, Cremos. I hope you all have it with you. And let's open up to pages 34 and 35. The left-hand side is in Spanish, and the right-hand side is in English. And this is called Chapter 3, 
and it starts off with the heading, Jesus grew up in a family. Like we grow up in a family. Jesus grew up in one too. We've got kind of a little gathering prayer here. It says, for our families, that we may all keep growing in God's love, we pray. God, please help us to share your love. For families who do not have everything they need to live, we pray. God, please help us to take care of them. Then they ask us, what is special about your family? Well, I know that not everybody has a mommy and a daddy. Sometimes it might be a mommy and a grandma. Sometimes it could be daddy and your aunt. Families are different, but families are the people who love you. And if you don't have both mommy and daddy, don't feel bad. Just know that there are people who love you, who look after you, who feed you, who clean your clothes, who really help you to grow up. All right? Now look to the next part. It says, we believe. God chose Mary to be the mother of his son. God loved Mary very much. Mary always did what God wanted. And we have a little part down at the bottom of the page from St. Luke in the New Testament. One day God sent an angel, whose name was Gabriel, to a young girl named Mary. She was only a teenager. The angel told her that she was going to have a son. Mary was also told to name him Jesus. The angel said, Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Well, Mary must have been sitting there thinking, Oh my goodness, what does this mean? I'm not even married yet. She must have been very puzzled. But Mary was a good, good girl, the best. And she said, Yes. Mary told the angel that she would do what God wanted. All right, let's turn over. And now we're on pages 36 and 37. Up at the top, it says, Mary is the mother of God's only son, Jesus. Jesus loves his mother. He wants us to love her too. Now, after we stop, you can do this. It says, color the word yes. Ask Mary to help you say yes to God. Mary always said yes. She never questioned or denied anything that God wanted of her. And that's what God wants us to do, to say yes, to do the right thing, to be a good boy, a good girl, to love our parents, to help around the house, to try hard in school, and make sure you say your prayers and go to Mass. These are ways that we say yes to God. All right, right underneath the big word yes, it says Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Mary married a man named Joseph. He was a lot older than Mary, but he was a good, good man. Mary was going to have a baby, which we already know. Mary and Joseph were waiting for Jesus to be born. Joseph would be Jesus' foster father. Remember, the real father is God. But Joseph was the man chosen to help Mary to raise Jesus. Now, underneath it says, read along, all right? And if you can't read this yet, just listen, all right? During that time, a new rule was made. All men had to go back to the town of their father's family. They had to sign a list and be counted. You know what that is? That's a census. 
And this year in the United States, we had a census done. You might have seen it on TV, or maybe the census taker came to your house. It's a way to count people to, to know where they are. Joseph was from the town of Bethlehem, so he and Mary had to go there. Now, here's the part from the Bible. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. So all went to be enrolled, that means counted, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee to the city of David, that is called Bethlehem, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, that means they were engaged, who was with child, that means she was waiting for baby Jesus to be born. And while they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now, this is a story that you hear every year at Christmas time. When they got to Bethlehem, there were crowds of people who had already gotten there because of this census, okay? So they went knocking on doors of inns, like a hotel. And each place was filled up. So they couldn't find a place to stay. Finally, they went to this one innkeeper and he said, I'm sorry. I see your wife is with child, and I wish I could help you. The only thing I could do is to put you out behind the, the inn in a building I have. It's really a barn, a stable, okay? I know it's not great. It's smelly. It's dark. But at least she'll be able to lie down for the night and rest. Well, that's what they did. They went to the stable. And during the night, Mary gave birth to baby Jesus. And it says she wrapped him in swaddling clothes. That's just like a blanket that she wrapped around. You've seen pictures of newborn babies, or maybe you even have a baby brother or sister. And mommy would wrap the baby in a blanket, all right? It kind of holds their arms down because you know what? Babies scratch their faces. And that keeps the baby content. And they had no crib. They had no cradle. But what they did have was a manger. A manger is like a V-shaped wooden box where animal food gets put, and the animals come up to it and eat from it. Well, this was cleaned out. They brushed it all off, and there was no straw or hay left in there. And Mary wrapped the baby, put a little clean straw in there, and they placed the baby in the manger. So the baby was comfortable, even though he was born in a stable. All right, guys, let's turn over to the next page. 38 in Spanish and 39 in English. We've got some nice pictures here. We see a picture on the left page, the Spanish page, of Mary with Jesus when he was a little boy. I think he looks about your age. I'd say he, he would be like a first grader or a second grader. And he's helping his mother carry something in a big sack. And Mary looks down at him and smiles because she loves him so much. Now on the right-hand page, this is one of my favorite pictures. This is Joseph, along with young Jesus. I'm going to show you something. This is my little statue of Joseph. And if you look here, he's carrying tools. Joseph was a carpenter. That means he made things. He could build furniture. He could build window frames. He could build tables. He could build a whole house if he needed to because that's what he did. He was a carpenter. And we see him in this picture in his carpentry shop. 
In fact, he's sawing a piece of wood right now. And there's Jesus kneeling on the floor. And it looks like he's using kind of a drill to make holes. Maybe that's the bottom of a seat. See, Joseph taught Jesus how to be a carpenter. That's what men did then. They would teach their sons all about the trade that they were in. If they were shepherds, they would teach them the sons to be shepherds. If they were um, men who carried water from the wells, they would show the boys how to do that. And the girls would learn all about taking care of a house from their mother. Now today we don't say that because that sounds sexist. It means women do this and men do that. But that's the way it was then, okay? Let's see what it says on this page. Up at the top, there's a box, and it says, as Catholics. Each year, during the nine days before Christmas, Catholics in Mexico act out a story of Mary and Joseph on their way to Bethlehem. People take part in this outdoor play called Las Posadas. In English, these words mean the inns. Now remember, we just talked about inns when Mary and Joseph got to Bethlehem. Those who play Mary and Joseph go from house to house, but no one will let them in until the last day. Then the person playing the innkeeper lets them in. The rest of the people enter and celebrate the birth of Jesus. Now right here in St. Pete and St. John's, we have a group of people who reenact La Posadas every year. Grown-ups, but they bring kids along too. And some of you might be able to be one of the houses where people come knocking on the door. Or you've seen it happen. Or maybe your parents take part. It's very exciting. It's a wonderful way to prepare for Christmas. Underneath that it says, how do you celebrate the birth of Jesus with your family? I know in my family, the first thing we always did was go to Mass. When I got a little older, we would go to Midnight Mass. But when I was a kid, we would go on Christmas morning. And my mother would have spent a lot of time cleaning the house and fluffing it up, so to speak. She'd put on a pretty tablecloth and we'd have the tree all decorated, and we'd always have a beautiful nativity set, you know, where we have our own little manger and our figures of Mary and Joseph and the kings and the shepherds and the, the little animals, and we'd all look at that and talk about how beautiful it was and think about when Jesus was born. And then we always had a big, beautiful Christmas dinner and my grandmother would come, and sometimes my Aunt Marie and my Uncle Jimmy, and some cousins. And when I got older, I would have the Christmas dinner, and my sister and her two boys, and her daughter would come, and my brother-in-law. And I never had a great big family, because there were only two children in my family. But what we did have, we would share, and it was very important that we were together as a family. And I hope your family's like that. I hope you get to spend time with people. This year you have to be very careful because of COVID-19. They're saying no more than 10 people. Well, I don't even have 10 people in my family, but I'm sure some of you have great big families. But you have to be careful. Remember, social distancing and masks on your face and wash your hands constantly, either with good warm soap and water or with hand cleaner. Very important because we want everybody to be strong and healthy. All right, now let's look at the top of page 39. It says, at Christmas, we celebrate the birth, the birth of God's son, Jesus. We can celebrate by sharing the story of Jesus' birth. What would you tell your family and friends about the birth of Jesus? I'm sure you, 
are used to hearing it and maybe have seen it on TV or on a video. And you could describe so many things for me because your kids are so smart. You remember. And that makes me proud to think that you're in first grade this year and just growing up and knowing all about your religion. All right, then it says, Mary, excuse me, Jesus lived in Nazareth with Mary and Joseph. We call Jesus, Mary, and Joseph the Holy Family. Now, I already showed you Joseph here. Let me get Mary and baby Jesus. And there we have our Holy Family. The Holy Family lived in Nazareth. Uncles, aunts, and cousins lived there too. Jesus and his family loved one another. Jesus obeyed Mary and Joseph. He did what they asked him. I hope you guys do that. I hope you're always good for mom and dad. And when they ask you to do something, you do it. And you know what's even better? If you walk up to mommy and say, Mom, do you want me to set the table for dinner? Or can I put the dishes in the dishwasher? Dad, can I help you wash the car? Parents love that. When you volunteer, it means so much. But here's what they don't like. Mary, could you come here and help me set the table? And you do this. <laughs> oh. oh, it takes all the good away from it because when you're grumpy, Mommy will say, you know what, it's easier if I just do it myself. But make Mommy and Daddy happy and do things with a smile on your face. And don't give them an argument. Just be the best kid you can be. Okay. One of the ways Jesus... Mary and Joseph helped one another. And it says, color the heart only if it is next to a way the holy family showed their love, did not share their feelings, helped each other with chores, were kind to each other. And then it says, circle what you will do to help your family. Now, boys and girls, I would like you to do what it just said and color in what you think is right. Send it to me by email. It's very important that I get homework from you every week so I know that you are taking part in our classes. I'm going to end here for today, and I wish you all a very, very good week, and I'll see you next week. God bless you all. Thank you for being here.